is talking about anime. Yes, it's important to hear what they say. I hear over wipers throughout night and day. Now that you listen to the Rand Cafe. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Animac here from Anime Uproar, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Rand Cafe Anime Podcast. This is a really special episode because not only are we going to be talking about the best isekai that are not really isekai, we're also going to be premiering chapter two of the Rank Cafe isekai, known as That Time I Got Isekai to Another World with My Truck. And we have a special guest today, along with Nux and Briggs. Nux and Briggs! We have, for the first time ever, a young lady known as Iron Mouse. Oh, I'm really nervous. Isn't she the cutest thing ever? I can't. Yeah, welcome, Iron Mouse, Briggs, Briggs's favorite virtual girl. But of course. I'm your favorite? Yeah. Yeah, Briggs told me, he's like, I respect Melody, but I'm a mouse fan for life. Number one mouse fan, what can I I love Melody. She's like one of my best friends. Mm hmm. Yeah, but Briggs is on Team Mouse all the way. (laughs) But of course. But yeah, great to have you. And I'm really looking forward to this. Briggs, we also have another announcement regarding the Rank Cafe Cosmos. Do you want to take it away? Thank you for putting me on the spot. I think I could do it. So not only are we dropping the second chapter of the Rank Cafe Isekai, but up until now, we've just been reading them out loud. But if you want to read them yourselves and support not only your boys, but also the production of this novel and maybe audiobooks and other stuff in the future. Um, we do have a Rant Cafe Patreon. There is a link to that attached to this Twitch. It'll be, it'll be in the description of the YouTube video, etc. We'll probably tweet it out a bunch as well. And um, by donating, I think it's $2 on Patreon, you could read the first two chat or the prologue, the first chapter and the second chapter, as well as I kind of compiled our audio recordings and threw that on there as well. And you would get access to a Discord server. All the other tiers have different rewards and stuff like that as well, but I won't go into it. Yeah, uh, that's Patreon, patreon.com slash Rancafe. And so if you want to support this podcast or the One Piece Virgin or the light novel, any of that, you can support us there on that specific Patreon. It's for everything. And in particular, we'd love to get some awesome artists making our light novel drawings. So that obviously costs money. So that would be awesome if you guys can support us through Patreon. And we do have the first cover, light novel cover, done by Kuzomari. I tweeted it. It's already on Twitter. It will be shown on YouTube as well. And if you are just listening, then you can go to at Anime Opera on Twitter and you will see it. I will pin it. And it looks great, in my opinion. Check it out. We want to get more of those done for when new characters are introduced, all that type of stuff. But yeah, I'm really excited. Who wants to start off this conversation? I think I think Nux should because he has he's full of energy right now. Nux? All right, babies, we're here, and it's real. The best non-isekai isekai anime ever. Today, we're discussing an incredibly important prevalent topic in society that people for far too long have disregarded and cast into the shadows. Today, we talk about isekai, but like when isekai magically show up in the middle of non-isekai anime, and it's amazing. So, I would like to kick it off with what I think is my first go-to thought when I think about non-isekai isekai anime, and mm-hmm, that is mm-hmm. the final arc of the original Yu-Gi-Oh. Ah, the Egypt mystery. The Egypt mystery arc. I feel like it's an underrated arc altogether. It It's fantastic. I love it. You're on the edge of your seat the whole time. For whatever reason, the antagonist looks like this massive demon with a dragon penis, and it's terrifying. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, yes, and um, yeah, it's pretty epic. So there's also another one in Yu-Gi-Oh GX. The second last arc in Yu-Gi-Oh GX is also an Isekai arc, and it's also pretty great. But I feel like the reason why it works so well with the Yu-Gi-Oh world is because it's really hard to craft a situation. Where the the stakes are actually high. It's like, at the end of the day, there's guys playing cards. Especially in GX, they're just in a school playing cards. 
Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, there's someone who's going to throw everyone into the Shadow Realm, others, all, you know, also known as killing them, if they lose a card game. And now, the world is theirs for the taking, because they defeated someone in a card game. So it's just, it's hard to actually make the stakes feel real. And by adding an isekai element to it, where they get trapped in this other world, you, um, you know, it makes the stakes feel a lot more real in this world of Yu-Gi-Oh. I really need to so, rewatch Yu-Gi-Oh. I want to watch Yu-Gi-Oh now. I'm yes, Briggs. Because like, I watched all I of Yu-Gi-Oh watch- when I was uh, younger. And when I first got into anime, like, I watched the entire uh, series. But I really do not even remember what the hell you're talking about at all. <laughs> so, yeah, I remember that. So I remember the first arc that you were talking about in the original Yu-Gi-Oh. I haven't seen GX, but I do know what you're talking about in terms of Yami and all the fun stuff. So in the in the original Yu-Gi-Oh, um, there was this character, Bakura. He was like yes. one of the, the antagonists throughout the entire story. He showed up in the Duelist Kingdom arc, and like he he was never the main antagonist. Like in the Battle City arc, the Egyptian gods played such a much bigger role than he did um, throughout. And eventually, at the end, when all of his maniacal machinations were completed, and he managed to actually send everyone into the past, like fate is a really huge you know theme in the original Yu-Gi-Oh, and you see how. It started off with who is we we still didn't even know that the pharaoh was the pharaoh. We only knew he was the pharaoh because other Egyptian dudes were like, "It's the pharaoh." It's <laughs> only totally, aside from that, we had no idea. Oh, and by the way, fun fact: um, I actually just watched the Dark Side of Dimensions Yu Gi Oh movie, um, and th- there were three Kaiba scenes that, that I was just laughing my ass off. One scene was uh, at the end of the movie. He he was so stuck up that he wanted to actually duel the Pharaoh. The mad lad created a time machine to go back 2,000 years. <laughs> he meets the Pharaoh 2,000 years in the past. To go that's, what I, that's what I always wanted to do. I wanted to create a time machine so I can go against Napoleon in a battle of military chess. strategy. Yeah, hell yes. Actually, Napoleon wasn't that good at chess. <laughs> All right. Well, then you could actually you actually have a chance. What the fuck? What the fucking Yu-Gi-Oh movie? I want to go back to Napoleon so I can play him in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> you know. Yes, imagine. Imagine Take that Napoleon. Well, he did have a lot of spare time when he was exiled to Saint Helena. You know, but twice. um, anyways, <laughs> but Mouse, Mouse, would you like to say something? I don't want to put you on the spot, but I also don't want to us to take all the good options away from you. I feel I feel like an idiot right now. I didn't even know there was a Yu-Gi-Oh movie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well I'm going to tell you another scene from the might make you watch it due to the sheer masculine bombasticness of the scene, okay? Tux. Is Pegasus in it? Pegasus is not in it. Uh, it's not but uh, anyway, but you have to listen to the scene. Okay. So, so so Kaiba, um, he's going on this whole rant. He's pissed. And he like he picks up like a water bottle. He drinks the whole thing, and he's just in a bad mood. And he like crunches it in his hand. He destroys the bottle, throws it on the ground, and then he says, "Whoever designed that bottle, fire him immediately." Kaiba Corp. <laughs> Kaiba Corp products don't bend that easily. Fire. <laughs> he goes on this whole rant. I thought that was one of the Man, greatest scenes of You know time. how to get me. Like, you know how to get me to watch something. You just gotta throw yeah, in right. those, those one-liners, those badass moments <laughs> that don't mean anything, but it is so great. It, biggest flexes in anime. This guy crumpled the water. <laughs> it's like when Vegeta says, like... <laughs> I, was, I knew you were gonna say that! <laughs> like, I knew it! The reporters. It's like, oh no, you guys can't go Super Saiyan during the tournament. It'll Reporters will recognize us from the Cell games, and they'll be all over our doorsteps. I don't see the problem. If the reporters come to my doorsteps, I'll just destroy them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i also love those scenes but they're the yeah, best little anyway. moments that just add so much to a series so the yeah. topic is wait wait it's non isekai isekai and right. an isekai, so it's like the the whole like, anime is not an isekai but it might there might they might be temporarily isekai and then come back or they're they're just like traveling to another place that is completely separate Mm -hmm. from their own world so for example in one piece they travel a lot and then they then you have like skypea 
where they're going to like a sky island that is completely separate world from the normal world. Yeah, so that would be mad, mad lad in the chat just said, Yugi says, the Pharaoh was passed on. There's no way for him to come back. Kaiba. And who decided that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so, for example, like, Skypea is, like, it's a fantasy world within One Piece, right? Yeah. Yes. Even though it's not technically... Yes, tale? perfect! Boom! Edelus! That was on my list. Go for it! Take it away, Mousy! I mean, it wasn't my favorite arc, but I did like it. Take it away! What did you like about the Edelus arc? Um, I... Honestly, what I really liked was that they were out of their element, and plus, Gajil was a little bit more featured in there. I really love Gajil and Lovey. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm a weirdo. G Gajil and, um... That's like the I best like ship Gajil. in Fairy Tale. I like it better than Grey and Gajil Nubia. Gajil was so much fun. I know uh, Nux will kill me for saying that, but... I, I respect it. I, I think uh, Gajil and Lovey's... And uh, Lud Ludicrous Fun just donated uh, 21 subs. Very cool. Thank you. 25 subs. Ludicrous sucks. Fun, thank you. 25 subs. My bad. Hell yeah. That's yeah. a pretty ludicrous fun. <laughs> I know. Right, we is. definitely haven't made that joke before. <laughs> right? I think <laughs> Sam donated like, donated like five or ten subs as well. Thank you, guys. Yeah, very cool. Appreciate it. But, um, all right. Yeah, so in, in the Edelus arc, I liked how, well, obviously all their personalities were completely flipped. Like, and Natsu was a coward, awesome. and Grey wore, like, a ton of clothes. <laughs> it was always cold, he was wearing clothes. And Urza was a villain. But that's and, the thing, it's like, I feel like Urza is always a badass, no matter what, and that's what I liked about her. I really liked the villain Urza a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I think my favorite part about the Edelus are, hands down, is Cat Ichia. <laughs> Cat Ichia is one of the greatest characters of all time. I hate that Ichia does not get the respect he deserves. He doesn't. It's so sad. I don't know. All I'm thinking about right now is how Fairy Tale, for all its faults, has some of the best waifus. Like, all the chicks are great. It's the, the chicks! Chick, the chicks are pretty great. Like, even Lucy. People hate on Lucy, but it, like. Lucy, from... Lucy sucks. <laughs> from what I've seen, like I haven't seen all of Fairy Tale, but from what I've seen, I like Lucy. I like her backstory. I don't know. I think I people like are. Too. She doesn't suck. It's just they just wrote her into really fucked up, stupid situations. But I like her as a person. Same, she and I like her as a as as a sexy. Like, and girl. she can be a badass too. It's not her fault that she got fucking keys. <laughs> it's like everybody got all these fucking keys. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Those um, zodiacs. Yeah, suck those ass. are not not the coolest, not powers, the coolest but powers, but I do hear an echo. I don't know if you guys also hear an echo. Yeah, I'm hearing it's an echo. Sometimes right now. it's weird. Like sometimes we get it, sometimes we don't. The audio quality is not overly amazing today. I don't know what's going on. Sometimes you guys are cutting out for me. Discord sucks. Discord does. So suck. maybe it's. Story. Mm, yeah, I don't know. Let's try to, to deal with it though. But yeah, I like. Like people are like, oh, Mira Jane is awesome, but Lucy sucks, or Urza this. Like they're all great, man. Even Juvia. <laughs> Juvia is amazing. What do you mean, even Juvia? Daddy. She's, she's always wet, bro. Thank you, Mouse. Mouse just loves all the characters, so we can all relate to her with different opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so, as the one fairy tale stand of Rant Cafe, I have to say, um, Ichia goes around with his ultimate catchphrase, "Man." And um, then when they go to Edelus and they see, like, the Edelus version of Ichi is just this flying cat. This, like, really manly flying cat. And the cat goes around saying, Meow! <laughs> it's, the it's the greatest thing ever. And then, but, uh, and there was a callback to him later. When they're actually, like, when they leave Edelus, they don't notice that Ichi, the Ichi cat also leaves Edelus. And later in the series, Ichi has, like, this this partner in crime that they don't want to reveal his identity and it's the Ichia cat and somehow they get along and they're the ultimate duo and it's amazing yeah i mean fairy tale has its charms i fairy think people, charms. you shouldn't be too angry at it i mean it's a I... wonderful show it's just the last season sucked balls and they fucked it up with the animation Sorry. uh i don't know if it was the animation the animation was fine the fights suck like choreography wise it was very bad. 
Yeah. It made me very sad. Can I bring up one? Go for this it. Might Go for a bit, it. Co- this might be a bit controversial, but I'm going to say all of Black Clover <laughs> is an isekai that's not what? really an isekai. <laughs> yes, because for Yami, all of Black Clover... Uh. <laughs> what? No. Okay, if we're uh. going to morph things like that, then Devil uh. of a Part-Timer absolutely counts. Because right, it's an I isekai. Think... So, well, that's a reverse isekai, though. So it's not. It's so it's pretty much a non isekai isekai. They get isekai into the, the way you're Japan. phrasing it, anime. Every anime or every anime character is like the protagonist. His parents died, so he grew up in a foster house. Boom, isekai anime. <laughs> no, but no, 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 no. Obviously not, because think about it. Yami lived in a completely different country that we don't know where it is. It's like based on Japan, or it could be real Japan if if he got isekai to another world. But he goes on a fishing boat, gets lost, all of a sudden ends up in Clover Kingdom, where no one even talks about the land of the rising sun. No one else is there from that land. So he pretty much got isekai to the Clover Kingdom world. It's a terrible argument. Clover King, Black Clover is not a non-isekai isekai. Uh, I like uh, Ayami Fine. as a character, though. But... Fine, then. Like what about the demon? Daddy. The demons... Are from another world in Black Clover, and then they get isekai into the Black Clover world. Dude, this is like a pretty weak ass argument. Then Pokemon is also an isekai because the Ultra Beasts in Sun and Moon are from another world. Yes, so that aspect is an isekai. <laughs> a non isekai isekai. Well, the Dragon Ultra Raid is an isekai. There we go! Boom! Well said. Yeah, Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is also a non isekai isekai. So we're all in agreement that Devil's a part timer counts, right? <laughs> no. Yes. <laughs> it's so fun. Like I, don't know, I feel like it's like a perfect example of a show that if you could have like great character and great characters and great character interactions, like there's nothing like overly amazing about it, but everyone loves the shit out of it. Dude, I love uh, Devil's a part timer. Everyone loves it. It's crazy. And like, are the fight scenes all that great? Not really. No. It's literally just the characters and their interactions that are just unbelievable. Wait a yeah. minute. Doesn't Devil's a Part-Timer have a short, busty, pink-haired character? Chiho. Dum, dum, dum. I don't think she had pink hair, though. Her hair is brown. <laughs> Yo, so is Chiho's. Chiho's hair was brown. <laughs> no? Let me Google this. Briggs, does this count? Nux, no. Briggs, I'm gonna talk about it anyway. <laughs> yes! It's uh, pink, bro. The little girl has pink hair. The short girl, not little girl. Not little girl. Someone was just mean. very impressed that I actually remembered a character's name. I do not remember any any character's names, which speaks volumes to how great Devil is a Part-Timer Ooh. is. The, and I how great she hosts. It's been years before. since I've seen it, but I only have good memory. The point is that we now know why Briggs loves Iron Mouse so much. Damn, damn, damn. Because I like Chiho, huh? <laughs> All right, oh, Briggs, it. I'm sorry, but Emmy Yusa was best girl. 100%. Emmy. Oh, hell yeah, Briggs is a true Chad. Dude, yeah, Emmy, Emmy has, is a great Tsundere character. Y- you know, Tsundere's are my weakness. Mine too. And MILFs. And MILFs. <laughs> <laughs> MILFs. Think about it, bro. Kira's wife is a milf tsundere. I have no chance. I stand no <laughs> chance. That's amazing. <laughs> is it the weirdest thing of all time? Um, and like, I don't know. I don't get it. Somehow the rant cafe has evolved to, to such a point. I don't have any weaknesses. So I don't know what you're talking about. But anyway, moving on. <laughs> you know what I always find <laughs> hilarious? Anyway. Everybody has a weakness. Stop this right now. I'm just saying because I don't want people to figure it out. My Anna Milfers in the chat show me some love. Also... We've had questions about is interspecies reviewers a non isekai isekai for Krimu? Mm. I mean, I, I don't. All right. So I was always referring to it to, to the whole idea of non isekai isekai, not just because there happens to be one character from another world. Like the stories, non isekai isekai, I was thinking of is like Bleach or the Greed Island arc. Because in Bleach, they start off in the human world. And then there are certain arcs where they isekai into different places, like the Soul Society or Waco Mundo. Or the Greed Island arc, they all start off... It, it's not even a different world. It's just such a, a setting that's so far removed from the reality of the story, it feels like it's another world. Yeah, they literally yes. get teleported into Greed Island, like to this island. And then right? they play Yu-Gi-Oh there! So <laughs> we, we've gone full circle! 
Okay, ready yeah, for this? I, I, and then there was like, you know, huge brain, 5,000 IQ, a company on, and they fly around three episodes. <laughs> Animek, you just watched it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I, I'd love to talk about Greed Island because I think it is really well, well done. Think about it. So Hunter Hunter already develops this complex power system, right, with Nen. And there are so many different attributes and elements and versions of it and how it exists. And then the writer's like, you know what? I'm going to create a totally different world, a game world called Greed Island where we have this complex magic card system infused with men. And I'm going to put all this effort into making it make perfect sense and be awesome. And he does exactly that. And it is absolutely awesome. So I loved Greed Island as a sort of its own arc within the wider story, because it could be a separate story on its own in some ways. And yet it's obviously in that world. And we learn later. First, we think it's like an actual virtual game, but then we realize that it's a real thing and i just spoiled a bunch of people but yeah dude it's been way too long since i've seen the green island arc because i've rewatched the chimera ant arc and the york new arc many many times and i've rewatched the uh the hunter exam arc just because like starting hunter hunter was always fun so i've always rewatched it with other people trying to get them into it but i feel like i never rewatched the green island arc i think i only watched it once and that's so sad because it's so good I mean, I've, don't get me wrong. I've seen the the uh, dodgeball game a plethora of times. It's one of the greatest battles in the history of anime. But, alas. Um, Melfi, I think it is you that's Melfi, echoing, by the way. Is it me? Yeah, I don't know why. Oh, fuck. Are, do you have your headphones out or, or anything? No. Or are, you ha are your headphones really close to your microphone? No. Hmm, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's it, also happened when, when, like, in previous episodes, so... It's weird, like, it's just coming and going, like, it's coming and going. Oh, now yeah. I hear it again now, it's pretty bad. No, now it's really bad. Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> Where's that voice coming from? <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, okay, um, this is a very stupid one, but I'm gonna say it anyway. So we all know that No Good No Life is an amazing isekai. But... Fact. It is also... Contains another isekai within the isekai. Bruh! Yeah. Isekai I was gonna, I was gonna bring this up, but then I was gonna say no because it sucks. Like, that's a terrible isekai within an isekai. It's not good I mean, at all. Fair enough, but, you know, that's, <laughs> we're not arguing which is the best. We're just talking about them and stuff. Is it, aren't we arguing them? I mean, the, the title best. says debating the best non-isekai isekai, uwu, but I was focusing more on the uwu <laughs> than the debating. Ah, uh, fair <laughs> Well, another non-isekai isekai that I think Animac will appreciate, and then I'm going to slap Briggs, uh, is the Purgatory arc in Seven Deadly Sins. Yeah. I, I haven't seen this. Don't spoil Briggs, it. you need to read Seven Deadly Sins! I know. It's in Yo, the remember manga, when yeah. I was a Seven Deadly Sins YouTuber? Good times. Yes! <laughs> Please read it on stream. Like, don't, don't read Ragnarok and whatever. Just, just read Seven Deadly Sins, man. Ragnarok no, yeah, the Purgatory like pretty arc. the anime. The purgatory <laughs> so arc is a there. the purgatory arc is a really cool uh, arc that features like only a few characters. So the purgatory oh, arc is my, it's my favorite arc in Seven Deadly Sins. Is it really? Yeah, it is. Is one of the best ones. I, I I like the Mael stuff probably the most. Fact that I agree. That was my favorite. Like I guess twist, but but the overall arc had a lot of like more boring chapters. Just like holy knights fighting lesser demon guys. Well, you're saying the Holy Knights are not relevant, bro? Yeah. <laughs> the Holy Knights <laughs> sucked at the end of the anime. Dude, the, the, one of my favorite chapters in The Seven Deadly Sins, because the Escanor arc right after that was uh, also one of my favorite arcs. But, dude, that one chapter where you had, like, puny Escanor, you know, without turning into, like, his ultra form, and he was standing there next to, like, Gil Thunder, Hauser, and the other guy, and they get attacked by this tiny little demon thing. <laughs> Yeah, one of those spores from the... The spore yeah. from the big monster. <laughs> and the spore is like, it attacks and it beats Gil Thunder, uh, Hauser, and the other guy at like one second. And they're all like, it's way too strong. And little Eskinor is like getting back up. Like he's going to fight <laughs> the absolute mad lad. Well, and, then, actually... and all the, the Holy Knights are like, bruh, if little guy is still getting up, we suck. <laughs> no, it's true. And you're right. It, it is 
comical in the sense that how overpowered Escanor is at times. But I thought that was actually a great scene for Escanor's character. Oh, yeah, though. absolutely. So so that Escanor arc might be my second favorite arc in the whole series. Like, I, I thought that that arc was going to suck in the beginning, and then it turns out, boom, Escanor is one of the greatest characters of all time. Yeah. Like, Br yeah, Briggs, so. you like Escanor? Like, He's my favorite character in the Escanor? Seven Deadly Sins, yeah. Bruh, that Escanor arc is one of the greatest arcs ever. It's so good. All right, you're convincing me. I also didn't listen to a word you said the entire time because I didn't want to get spoiled. It's a, it's a masterful power us chads have. We just ignore. We, very impressive. <laughs> the power but, um, of ignore is strong in you. Yes. It's, it's one of Ragnar's uh, special abilities. Nice. Nice. So, but, uh, I would like to talk about real quick. Clearly the greatest non-isekai of all time. The world is so unique. It feels like it's a different part of the world, but it's still within the world. As y'all know, I'm the biggest Leaf Village stan. It was like a son to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Leaf Village doesn't count. Bro, okay. it's just so unique and different. Dude, the dude, best Rick, locations of all just, time. It's just a village, bro. It's Saying just it's just a village, village, bro, is such a weak mindset. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <sighs> You've accepted what happens. Losing imperfection of a village. <laughs> uh, okay, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. We should probably get to the actual, some real isekai or non isekais. Yeah. Right. So I didn't even get to talk about the purgatory arc, but I don't want to spoil Briggs. So. Yeah. So you just got to say it's a good arc, Briggs. It's a good arc. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Anything else worth mentioning? I think the first, like you mentioned Bleach earlier. I think the first Soul Society arc is one of the best shonen arc yeah. of all time it's honestly amazing yeah that is even, a isekai even the Waco Mundo arc. um there's another isekai arc that i wanted to talk about it's and it is from the magi manga but guess who doesn't read the magi me animag no one <laughs> no one uh, oh my god i just thought of another great non-isekai isekai the eclipse Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the eclipse is its own own world. I think. You know what's hilarious? I feel like isekai has become so popular that even like just fantasy shows are referred to as isekais by people. Like Goblin Slayer is not an isekai. Um, yeah, Don, Don Machi. Dan Don Machi, Machi is not an isekai, but like. People and I've seen people refer to interspecies reviewers as an isekai. I mean, I would want to get there but that doesn't make it any yeah it makes no sense like i made an isekai bracket on my channel and people are like where's dan Ma don machi i'm like dude this is da a did you just say don mousy don mousy that that was the best uh what's it called segue of all time mousy <laughs> take it away sorry for hitting my mic anime <laughs> i'm sorry i'm like going crazy right now I would you consider um... All right, all right, Massey, would what? you consider Dr. Stone to be a non-isekai isekai? No. Why? I mean, because it's like a whole new world type yeah, thing. Yeah, but they're still in the same world that they were already in. If they would have been on, like, another, like, dimension or planet, I think I would have considered it a uh, isekai. But isn't it technically a whole new world because of the time difference? <laughs> So I think it's perfect for a non-isekai flapping back with facts and logic right now. No, I know it's technically. In the world, though, everything still is there. It's just it just exists in a different form. Yeah, but that's the thing. Everything has changed so drastically from the culture to the physical landscape that you could say that despite being the same world, they're actually in a whole new world. They're in the stone world. Do you just want to sing a whole new world? Yeah, I love Aladdin. What can I do? <laughs> Aladdin's a great movie. Um, yeah, what the original. Aladdin. What? <gasps> no, Listen, see. he was very predatory to Jasmine, okay? What? I don't like his methods. He lied to her. Their relationship was based on lies. And he learned he from lie. that mistake. He As he was lie. 15. But you know what's funny? In but he was also movie, 15. In the new movie, they made it so that Jasmine lied to him first. So... Did they? I never saw the new one, so I yeah, don't know. Yeah, in the new one, she breaks out of the palace and pretends to be a commoner to see the world, like kind of the city outside the palace. That happened in the so original it, as well. Well, she was. No. She, did, she did that too in the original. Did, did she? Because yeah. I thought in the original yeah. it was just it was just uh, him lying to her first about 
Pretty no, close. she he had met her like outside, and then I remember after he was like, "Well, I want to bang that girl, so I need to be a prince because if not, I can't bone her." And then all of a sudden, everyone came together to say, "Prince Ali." How can it be? Ah, I don't remember the words. But I Prince Ali, Bob, Ali mighty is he, Ali Ababa. <laughs> I was Please. thinking of the parody version. Please. <laughs> Please let's let's. Okay, no. The real question here. The, we're gonna ask, ask the important questions. Melcy, are you a One Piece fan? I like One Piece, but I will uh -oh. tell you, I have not consumed all that is One Piece. I tried to start watching it from the beginning, okay, and I only got to the end of Skypea. Oh my God, that's perfect. <laughs> that's pretty much where we're up to in the One Piece Virgin podcast. Yeah, so in the Ver One Piece Virgin podcast, we are just finishing um, Skypea this week. So we have tw like 20 more chapters to go. Oh. So we are in Skypea. So that's perfect because Skypea itself is a great example of a non-isekai isekai. With One Piece, they're always traveling to different islands and worlds that are um, fairly isolated because of the Grand Line's uh, climate. So there's a lot of potential. But with Skypea, it's like they go up to a sky world that is isolated even further from the normal world so it really is a good example of a non-isekai isekai and oda does such an amazing job developing this completely different fantasy world and separating it from the rest of uh of like i guess the grand line in this case like you have the dials and he says that there's different islands and he talks about the different levels of clouds or the cloud cloud sea and yeah. like, she just has such a great job. Within, like, five chapters of Skypea, it's so fleshed out, unlike the fucking Leaf Village. What can I say? <laughs> Bro, how can you say that? I am the number one Leaf Village stan, and I am hurt. Bro, it's just how a can village. You say something? It's just a village, bro. <laughs> Might have the turns table. <laughs> yeah, well, oh, but anyway. I, I, I miss. like... You should pick it up. Water 7 arc's amazing. We're going to start that soon. You can follow along with Apex, what, Apex Virgins. <laughs> Apex Virgins. I, shall. I shall do it. Hell I'm yeah. Up for the challenge. That's amazing. No, it is. Uh, <laughs> when, you, when you said, I like One Piece, Briggs just smiles and you're like, but. And Briggs is like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. And I love Zoro. He's my man. Yes! Mousy's a Zoro stan! Of course okay. I Melcy, Holy shit. do you dislike Sanji though? Because like I'm a I'm a Zoro stan too. I love Zoro, but I I do prefer Sanji. He's my boy. <laughs> eh, oh. <laughs> I, I feel mean, like I like him, but I love Zoro. <laughs> yes, fair enough, dude. All right, you don't understand how a Zoro stands. See, we're so powerful. We rigged Rogers Base's whole massive uh, poll for the best character. Zoro won. Zoro beat Luffy. Okay. Crazy. <laughs> well, you guys, are, you guys know who I stand. Yes, we know. We know. But you haven't seen Ooh. nothing yet. Yes, yeah, uh, Animax and Nami stand. Yes. Oh, you like Nami? Yes. She's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's the one that I relate to the most in the whole crew. You relate to her the most? Why? Yeah. Because she's like, actually... a kleptomaniac. Yes. Sorry. I still, I I still be both cold. But also, no, she's like actually strategic, actually thinks of the consequences. Um, it has common sense. So in, in many ways, I feel like I do, I play that role on the Rank Cafe with things in that. <laughs> nice try. Being basically Sanji like and Zoro. Robin. Well, I mean, good so neither far. of you have seen the true best girl. So Briggs and I, I mean, whenever yeah. you're arguing best girl, we... We we stare down at you, okay? We look at you. There's we look down girl. so hard. We're looking up. Okay? I, I saw this one character, but I I haven't gotten there yet. But I saw clips of her, and I'm obsessed. The bunny girl. What's her name? Oh I don't even no! Know. Carrot. She's so cute. Carrot is cute. Come on. Carrot I is like cute. her. But but again, uh, you know what eats rabbits? Ooh. Boas. <laughs> Boa <laughs> Hancock. <laughs> My f she's, she's my white food for One Piece. What can I she's say? Both of she's all the the massive queen. titties. Yes, she's true. the queen. I like her. She does have massive titties. <laughs> it doesn't hurt matters, you know. Anyway, but someone, anyway. Someone, someone in the chat said that uh, Nami isn't useful. How dare you? Did you see? Did you see how far Zoro and Luffy got in their sailing efforts without Nami? Like, get out of here. Like, what are you reading? 
What are you reading if you think Nami is not useful? Ah! Anyways. <laughs> ah! Ah! Man, anyways. Look anyways. at me getting triggered over One Piece. Like I love a, like it. Some I love it. Brigo. Feels good. Feels good. I love how I turned an Isekai conversation into a One Piece one. Mousy, why are you thinking? Hello? Can't insult <laughs> Nami anymore. <laughs> no one, no one better insult Nami. She's a queen. Even post time skip, like she just doesn't get like the most amount of fights, and she's just more of a support character. But she, she's still very beneficial to the Straw Hats. If you guys recall, uh, Luffy versus Cracker, but I'll, I can't get into it because I do recall. No, yeah, but that's the thing. Not everyone An is ace gonna would be the... Cracker Briggs. I Not everyone's so. gonna be the the best fighter. But that doesn't mean that they're not a relatable and interesting character yeah. with great depth. You know who's a relatable well, they were saying and that she wasn't character. useful. And I think she's useful and very good as a support character. Yeah, she's a great character, all right? One Piece happens to have great characters all around. Some are just Zoros of the group. You know, what can you say? Anyway, moving on. Uh, another amazing non-Isekai Isekai anime. In my personal, very humble opinion, is the final arc of Yu Yu Hakusho. Have you guys seen Yu Yu Hakusho? So I've seen all of Yu Yu Hakusho, but I've never rewatched Yu Yu Hakusho. So it's the same. Yeah, it's been it's, too long. It's, I watched Yu Yu Hakusho before Hunter. It's not Hunter. too long. It's only like a hundred. Like no, no, no. I mean, it's been too long since I've seen. Yeah, Yu Yu it's been way too mm -hmm. long since I've seen it. I don't remember the last arc. I remember, fuck, what's that huge guy's name in the tournament? Taguro. Taguro, and it was never his final form. I remember that more clearly. <laughs> although it was I never his final form. It was never, never his final form. Damn it. <laughs> um, I remember that more clearly, and like the start of the series, but I do not recall the final arc. I remember some some different villain was introduced. So the final arc of Yu Yu Hakusho, um, basically Yusuke ran away because he found out that lo and behold, his dad was actually one of like the Demon King. And uh, then there were, like, all these warring demon factions in Demon World uh, that they, after his father died, they all wanted to take over. So, basically, it became this whole massive political argument of who would begin to run Demon World. And it's it's a great arc when it comes to the character development of Yusuke and Hiei, and Hiei's sister all have, like, major parts. But Yusuke pulled the absolute Chad move of his life. That probably made Briggs fall in love with him. Yusuke kind of blackmailed a whole bunch of political parties to say that instead of all these maniacal evil wars, like behind the scenes with like politics, pulling strings, making alliance, let's just do this. We'll have a good time. We'll find a leader. Tournament arc! He made a tournament arc in the demon world. All the demons came together. They said, you know what? We stand our demon commander guy. Every single demon had the ability to become the ruler of Demon World, and with almost no casualties instead of these massive wars that would span years, the Mad Lad brought peace to Demon World. Via a tournament, tournament arc. Wow. Via a tournament yeah. arc. And that I thought time that I got isekai to a Demon World for a tournament arc. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I, I love that. Uh, that. It's a great arc. I think it's an underrated arc. Because a lot of people, it, it's known that um, while he was writing Yu Yu Hakusho, he like got sick and he didn't really want to continue and his editors wanted him to continue and he ended very abruptly. But I think that this arc doesn't get the credit it deserves. I think it's actually amazing. It's no dark tournament arc, but it's amazing. <laughs> Out of the four arcs in Yu Yu Hakusho, half of them feels good. <laughs> the man knew what he was doing. What a mad lad. Mm. Anything else we need to cover before we get into the real isekai? Hell yeah. Um, I'm not sure. Someone said the Death 13 arc from JoJo's. You know, whenever they would go to sleep, Death 13 would come and kill them. Ah, yeah. That is a good... That is a, such a great power. Like, so many stands are such great powers. Yeah. Oh, love them. And it was up to Milf Hunter Kakyoin to stand above and feed a baby poop. Ooh, That's right. What about the abyss? It made an abyss. <laughs> no, because that's the concept. That is the world. That, that is the, the world. concept. It's not like. So one of my favorite isekai. What? 
you live around the abyss, so it's their world. It's not like a yeah, different... yeah. I mean, it's in the title, everybody. Yeah. Um. Someone bit. mentioned Escaflone in the chat. I would also call that a proper isekai. Yeah, that's it's a another. Yeah, it's another planet, but they like she gets transported to a another planet, and uh, I will never, I will never be able to decide whether Von Fennel or Alan Shazar are best boy. I will never. Eska Flone. Oh, you guys are talking about Dr. Stone in time. We should talk about Steins Gate. Steins Gate kind of has different world lines. Oh, come on then. Uh, that's pretty yeah. weak. I don't think it's time it. travel. It's time travel, but it's not easy guy. Because if we're well, talking about that, then Future Trunks is an easy guy. And he obviously yeah. is. No! <laughs> <laughs> So there's two different types of time travel, though, in Steins Gate. There's the one where he just goes back in time and sends his future memories to his past memories, in which case nothing changes. But there's ones where he literally changes so much that he jumps from one line to another, and things within the world are completely different from the previous line, in which case I would argue that that's a non-isekai isekai. What if... Large forehead. What, Large forehead. What if in our isekai, there's an arc where they go to an island where the fruit mills... Rain, would that be an isekai? <laughs> what? <laughs> an isekai? Sure. Remember, <laughs> remember I said, you. remember I said that there should be an anime where like each fruit is a female MILF character. So like blueberry, avocado, you know, we passion love you, fruit. Anime. Anyway, no one, no one's, no one's, uh, I, I support you. No one's following my train of thought here. So, okay, I'll move on. All right, I said so we just there, read the isekai. There, there, is an, there is an isekai in Gintama. There's two isekais that I recall off the top of my head in Gintama. But I don't really want to spoil them because the whole the, concept... The guy of the in the chat was losing it. Like, multiple people, but one guy's like, Nox fucking mentioned Gintama! Oh, I didn't even notice. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but there are a few arcs in Gintama. Probably. Also, a few people mentioned Code Geass, like Seas World. I, but, I was I mean, thinking of that as well. It's, it's not, not really, because they spend very little time there. So it is a different world. But... And also, you can argue that it all takes place in their mind anyway. Yeah, so Seas World, in my opinion, is a construct created by the ancient Ragnaris civilization. So it is just a construct within that world. But if, if they, let's say they had an arc based there, I'd agree with you. Yeah. But they didn't. It was just like one episode. They're like, oh, look at Seas World. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about Gintama because it's spoilers. Let's say, if hypothetically abducting people because they wanted a PSP game, that would sound like it would fit into the world of Gintama, wouldn't it? Hmm. <laughs> but we won't talk about it. Yeah, I'm sorry. I don't want to spoil. Because we might do a Gintama virgin and we want the virgins. Have you started <laughs> watching Prison School yet, Anorak? No, I haven't. I need to, but I, there's so much to do. But, oh, prison school, my gosh. Dude, Briggs, your tweet, the Leaf Village is like a son to me. I answered, it's just a... And then yeah, Noble responded, respond. too. <laughs> yeah. Someone in the chat said, Animark, check out Akikan because of my fruit idea. And this is the description. Oh, Akikan is a... Akikan is a Japanese Akikan is a Japanese light novel series about a group of anthropomorphic soda cans who do battle. That's what I'm talking about. Yo, oh, Noble man. replied to you, uh, Nux, saying he never doubted it even once. The leaf. That's village. what I just said. You cut yes. out. So I couldn't. I couldn't hear. Oh, all right. Um, well, anyway, um, I think it's uh, it's about time to isekai some trucks let's do it yeah let's do it chapter two uh, of that time I got i'm isekai such a bad voice actor i'm gonna suck truck. you're not gonna suck man you're awesome oh thank you i believe in you oh we'll see now i could do it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing <laughs> i know i know that was, this was this was like an anime moment <laughs> that was such an anime moment <clears throat> all right awesome. so um i have the script in front of me uh, I suggest we set, put it in the Discord so Mousy can uh, have it. She has it already. Oh, I have awesome. it already. That works. So are we starting from Chapter 2? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing is, I'm afraid Nox is going to keep cutting out, because that's what he's been doing lately. No! 
Hopefully well, he doesn't. We could make a Google Hangout super quick. I can invite everyone via the Discord. We all leave the Discord, and it'll just be audio only, but at least that way the audio quality will be better. All right. Yeah, it's, yeah. It'll, be, it'll be good. I'll talk without cutting out. <laughs> like you can oh, I, I, I didn't realize that when you cut out it's you deliberately yes it, it's first. me just i buffer you know everyone's oh, okay All right. <laughs> so we're shutting down the superior audio platform google hangouts yes okay good luck all right <clears throat> so we all remember what happened in chapter one do we need to uh do last time on that time i got <laughs> he just got cut out yeah again. See, see you just cut out so yeah let's try the the hangouts no all right, so chapter two, are we ready? Yes. Oh, I'm excited, guys. All right. Oh, I have to do one of those. Last time on the <clears throat> Red Cafe Isekai, there's this character, Birito Hondakawa Suzuki Yoda, and he was transported to another world with his truck where he met the outlandish and mad lad Chad, Lord Debrio. They are now traveling together. And yeah. what about the truck? With their truck. <laughs> <laughs> and what's okay. special about the truck? The truck sounds like Mousy. <laughs> it's a sentient okay. truck, yes. It's a sentient truck. Very cool. It's one of the greatest stories of the modern era. Chapter 2. The Furu Naked Princess. Oh my god. <laughs> As we drove along the gravel road, the sun slowly set behind the mountains in the west. Only a sliver of twilight could be seen poking from the rugged mountaintops. The truck... The truck flipped over on her high beam. Flip, flipped on her high beams. I could read. She was humming some childish dude, and it annoyed me beyond words. So I tried to think about something else. Assuming that the sun sets to the west in, the, in this world, as it does in the real world, then I could estimate that we are moving eastward, perhaps northward. But since I had no idea what this world looked like on a map or what was waiting for us up ahead, thinking about directions was almost pointless. Still, I had to do something to get my mind off her incessant humming. As we turned around a bend in the road, I saw a large stone building up ahead. It had lights in the windows and several horses were tied up to nearby trees. Hey, Brigo, I said. <laughs> What's that? Oh, yes, that's an inn called the Horny Goat. It's popular with travelers in this part of the lawless lands. I see. Uh, should we stop to get supplies? Maybe stay the night? Well, we do need to get off the roads. It's not safe here at night, but we shouldn't stop here. Brigo said sternly. This place is swarming with bandits and mercenaries. You don't want to bring a rare horseless carriage like this one anywhere near that place. <laughs> Truck Chan said. What should we do, Sir Brigo? I don't want those bad men to hurt me. Cha ha ha, don't worry, Truck Sean. Just, just keep driving for another few miles and we'll find a place to spend the night. A private place away from danger. Just saying, that was the greatest voice of all time. <laughs> that was perfection. It's, we it's all perfect. cried. It's actually so perfect. <laughs> all right. As we drove past the inn, we saw several rough-looking men standing outside and smoking cigars. They gazed at the truck with great curiosity, but they averted their eyes as soon as they spotted Brigo's massive frame poking out from atop the roof with his bulging muscles and gigantic sword. Brigo was not the type of man a bandit would take lightly. We drove on for another hour before Brigo told us to move off the road. Truck John drove up on the grass, and Brigo instructed her to go slowly and carefully over the bumpy, crunchy surface until we came upon a thick patch of trees. These trees were barely visible from the road, so Brigo told us to drive around the trees and nestle the truck between them. Once this was done, the truck would be completely hidden from view to anyone traveling along the road itself. As we came to a stop amid the trees, Brigo told Truck John to turn off her lights. I'm sorry, Truck Sean, I didn't mean to make you drive all over those bumps and pine cones, but these are dangerous roads for a rare treasure like you. I could take out, I could take out two dozen bandits of, on my own if it came down to it, so common bandits don't worry me. But if we cross paths with another kink user, even I could be bested in battle. Not by a single kink user, certain, certainly not. But if there are multiple together in a group, then all bets are off. Oh, don't worry, Sir Briggle. This detour was kind of fun. So, do you really think I'm a treasure? Absolutely! Briggo said as he jumped down from the roof and landed in the grass below. A lesser carriage than you would fetch a fortune on the black market. 
And I've never even heard of a sentient carriage that drives itself. You are priceless, my dear, Chuck Sean. Oh, stop it, Sir Briggle. You're making me blush. I sighed and turned to open the driver's side door. I have to pee, I said. <laughs> to pee? Brigo asked. Um, yes, you know, relieve myself, urinate. Oh, you must mean to drain the snake. Well, why didn't you say so? I also need to drain my snake, so let's drain our snakes together. Huh? Before I could even react, Brigo grabbed me by the arm and pulled me along the grass until we reached the nearest bush. Brigo unlatched the armor plate over his groin and moved it aside. I looked away just in time and I heard a heavy stream splashing on the ground below. What's the matter? Brigo asked. You're not draining your snake. <laughs> um, well, yeah, it's kind of awkward for me to urinate right next to someone else. What? Nonsense! Here in Twigoslavia, the draining of the snake is the perfect opportunity for men to bond and speak truthfully and sincerely. Let your words fall as freely as the fluid from your snake, is how the old saying goes. I shook my head. Where I came from, urinating is a, a private matter. This land, uh, what did you call it? Twigoslavia, Brigo said, his stream steady. That is what this land was called once, before the Civil War. Ah, uh, I see, I said, trying to avoid eye contact. Yes, this was all one great con- oh. Yes, this was all one great country once. And I was one of its leaders. It was the three of us back then. Animac, Nux, and I, Lord Brigo. But after the great incident occurred, Animac and Nux went to war, and our once powerful nation was split into smaller warring faction. Factions. Animac became the leader of Animakistan. Nux founded his own country called Nuxturia, and as their best friend and comrade, I simply couldn't choose a side. So I retired to the lawless lands and became a pirate. I was only half listening to Brigo's story since I was trying best to, to focus. I closed my eyes, sang a song in my head, hoping to actually relieve myself before my bladder exploded. The stream finally began. A slow trickle at first, and then a light but steady drizzle. Br Brigo juggled. Cha-cha-cha. That's a shy snake you got there, Birito. Your snake needs more confidence. Believe in your snake, Birito. Believe. I wanted to shoot myself. What kind of sick society <laughs> believes in social pissing? This is the worst isekai world in history. But I spoke too soon. Suddenly, we heard footsteps behind us. They sounded human. It must be a bandit, I thought. They're about to cut our throats while we're pissing, and Brigo will never even see it coming since he's too busy giving a motiva motivational speech to our snakes! I jumped and turned midstream. <gasps> well, what is it? The strange woman said, Whammon said. <laughs> I screamed. Who, who are you? What are you? Ah! I stumbled and fell in the bushes. Pee ran down my legs and into my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> You're acting strange, Beady the Coon. I was bored over there and I wanted to hear what you guys were talking about. You sounded so excited. Brigo finally turned. Oh my. The woman, the whammon, <clears throat> who, stood, who stood before us and who was speaking to us so casually was completely naked. She had flowing white hair that fell down over her shoulders and sparkled in the moonlight. She was a young woman, perhaps possibly in her early 20s, and she had glowing white skin, a full curvy figure, and extremely large breasts. In fact, her breasts were so large yet firm that it looked unreal. She was like a character from an eroge. Eroge. Not that I would know anything about Eroge, but I, <laughs> I was often forced to deliver them to sweaty otaku as part of my work for Spamazon. Come to think of it, there was something strange about this beautiful girl with the long white hair and truly incredible breasts. Have I mentioned? I'm sorry. <laughs> Aside from being naked and yet having no shame about it whatsoever, she was also wearing a hat on the top of her head. I had to look twice to confirm it, but it was, yes, it was a hat. A, a black cap with orange letters. And even though it was dark, I can swear the letter said SPAMAZON! Young lady, have you lost your mind? Brigo said, trying to sound serious, but his face betrayed a silly childish grin. He was attempting to look away, but he kept sneaking a peek every two or three seconds. Sir Brigo, I think your nose is bleeding. The naked girl said. What? Well, yes, of course it is. 
The girl was right. Brigo had a massive nosebleed, and worse yet, so did I! Blood flowed from my nose like a faucet! And my body froze. What, what happened to me? Did I fall on my face without realizing it? Did I break my nose? But Brigo didn't fall, and his nose is bleeding too! Did we both catch some crazy, deadly isekai disease? Are we both about to bleed to death from our noses? All these la all these thoughts raced through my mind. The girl laughed. <laughs> Birito kun, why are you sitting in the bushes? And Sir Briggo, what's in your hand? What? Oh! <laughs> Rigo mumbled as he realized yeah. in the confusion that he still hasn't put away his snake. <laughs> he scrambled to cage the beast. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait a second, I said. That hat, it's a Spamazon hat. Just like the one that I left in the glove compartment. Wait, don't tell me. Are you... Truckshawn? Brigo exclaimed, pointing at the girl. It's you, you're Truckshawn. The girl looked confused. Well, of course it's me. What are you talking about, Sir Brigo? But, but you're human. The girl seemed confused again. She glanced down to look at herself and then screamed. Ah, what is this? What's happening? I don't know. Brigo said. It's impossible. Truck Chan grabbed her large breasts and started shaking them around aggressively. <laughs> what are these things? She asked anxiously. What are these things, Beanie They're blocking my view of the road. <laughs> she ran over to the bushes where I was sitting, still shaking the breasts with her arms. <laughs> Calm down, I said, trying not to look at her directly. Every time I looked, the nosebleeds got worse. At this rate, I was going to bleed out in a matter of minutes. This is a magical world, right? It must be some crazy magic thing. It's probably completely normal in this world. No, Brigo said solemnly. I've never seen anything like this before. Great. I thought as Truckchan released another high-pitched scream. She moved closer to me, and I could now feel her breasts grazing my shoulders as she continued to grope herself nervously. Unless... Brigo continued. Unless this is the legend of the equine princess come to life. Is that how you pronounce What is that word? <coughs> equine. Equine. Equine princess come to life. The what? I'm dying. The what? <laughs> Wait, hold on. Brigo replied. I'll tell you after, but first we need to get some clothes on her. At this rate, we will both bleed to death through our noses. Yeah, right. What's all this about? Brigo shook his head. You really are clueless, my young friend. Every man's nose bleeds at the sight of a beautiful, voluptuous woman. It is a sign of manhood. He rushed over to where we had initially parked the truck and then returned with something large that seemed to be wrapped up in a long black fabric. I left my sword on the roof of the truck, Brigo said. I always wrapped it up overnight to protect it from rust. He unwrapped the fabric from the sword and then handed the fabric itself to Truck Chan as he walked up to us and held his bleh, I lost lost place. And he walked up to us and held out his hand. Brigo was careful not to look at her directly. Thank you. Truck Chan said and proceeded to wrap herself with the fabric. Due to the massive size of Brigo's sword, the fabric he used to wrap the weapon was about the size of a cloak for a normal person, and Truck Chan was able to use it to cover herself. Although the outrageous size of her breasts meant that the cleavage would still be seen bulging from beneath the cloak. Am I gonna be okay, Sir Brigo? Truck Chan asked, her voice crackling. Yes, my dear Truck Chan. Yes, everything is fine. Brigo said as he wiped the blood from his nose. In this world, there is a famous fairy tale called The Legend of the Queen Princess. In this story, there is a beautiful princess with flowing white hair who becomes a horse during the day and turns back into a princess at night. The story must have been a prophecy. You are, and you are the princess. But, but she's not a horse, I said, as I forced myself to my feet. The bushes, bushes reeked of urine, and so did my shoes. She's a truck. Sorry, I lost where we were. <laughs> She's a truck! Meh, close enough. Who says what do you mean? Me or truck chat? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, they're both <laughs> method methods of transportation, aren't they? And if you have a better explanation, I'd love to hear it. 
I shrugged. If Brigo couldn't explain this phenomenon after spending his entire life in this world, what hope did I have? Suddenly, we heard a loud grumbling noise. I jumped, thinking it was some hungry animal approaching us. Ew, what was that sound? Truck Chan asked. Hmm, Brigo said. He rubbed his chin and listened. The rumbling continued. Brigo moved slowly, tracking the sound, but eventually it ended up right near Truck Chan. Hmm. He bent over and then placed his ear close to her chest. Well, Truck Chan, my dear, the sound appears to be coming. Oh, what the hell? This is Brigo's line. Brigo! <laughs> well, <laughs> Truck Chan, my dear, the sound appears to be coming from you. More precisely, it, it is coming from your stomach. I think you're hungry. Very hungry. From um, me? Truck Chan squealed. Ew, that's yucky! It's hungry anyway! I sighed. Was this really happening? Am I really going to have to explain every basic fact of human life to a sentient truck who transformed it to a human girl? It's like, when I used to fill you up with fuel, I said. But for humans, fuel is our food. And when we're hungry, our body tells us that we need more fuel. Truck-chan thought about it, and then she nodded. Oh, I see. Okay, please fill me up then. She said and bent over, her backside pointing right at me. <laughs> I turned away and grabbed my nose, trying to prevent the inevitable bleeding. No, I said, still holding my nose. Humans eat food like meat. This is Animax, like, he's fighting a warrior. Meat, fruits, vegetables. I can't fill you up. You have to eat it yourself. Well, that's not entirely true. Brigo interjected in a big smirk on his face. You could technically fill her up, just not with food. I shook my head. I don't think that's helpful, Brigo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, you're burp. right. <laughs> he, he said, still smirking. My apologies, Birito. Okay, so where can I find this food? Oh, that's Truck Chan. Sorry. That was me. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. Okay. No. So, where can I find this food? Truck Chan asked. She was standing upright again. Brigo cleared his throat. <clears throat> well. That's my line. <laughs> I stopped. I, stopped. I just said, well. <clears throat> well, Birito, am I correct to assume that you're not much of a hunter? That is correct, I say. All right, then. Well, don't you and Truckshawn gather firewood and for the fire while I hunt down some dinner. This area is full of highly nutritious animals, so it won't take long. I nodded and began gathering branches and loose chunks of wood while Brigo commenced the slow process of taking off his armor. Truck Chan joined me. I scooped up branches with both hands and she gathered fire in one hand while holding the robe with the other. We pulled everything that we collected into one big pile and I took some rocks and arranged them in a circle in order to create a fire pit. At least, that's what I assumed the fire pit was. My knowledge about Thor fires up till that point came exclusively from movies. N less than half an hour after Brigo, after departing, Brigo returned, carrying two large animals, one over each shoulder. As he dropped the animal carcasses next to the fire pit, I realized that these creatures resembled wild boars, except they had spikes growing out of their backs like porcupines. Weirder still, their skin actually looked blue in the pale moonlight. Brigo made alterations to the fire pit and then started up the fire using some flint and a piece of his own armor. Before long, Brigo used his sword to remove the spikes from the back of the animals, and then he used a long piece of sharpened wood to skewer the first carcass and roast it over the fire. I don't know what the strange animal was, but the meat smelled incredible, especially since I haven't eaten anything since I've arrived till this cursed world. As soon as meat, the meat was ready, Brigo took the first carcass off and replaced it with the second. He then used his sword to cut the meat into portions for each of us. However, we quickly were learned that Truck Chan wasn't just hungry. She was extremely hungry. She devoured her own portion so quickly that we decided to give her our share as well. She didn't stop eating until the entire spiky boar was gone and only the bones remained. Then she burped, yawned, and drifted off to sleep with her head resting on my shoulder. Stunned, Brigo and I waited for the second boar to roast. Uh, for the second boar to roast. And then we split about half of it between us. I ate most of one leg while Brigo consumed the larger share. We packed up the rest, hoping to save it for later. I cannot believe one girl was able to eat so much, Brigo said. Truck Chan was now sound asleep on my shoulder. I nodded. I'm sure the type of... Yeah, that's you. I'm sure the type of fuel you used in your world doesn't exist here, so perhaps you must consume enough food as a human in order to keep the truck running throughout the day. I, I have no idea, I said. All this was too much for me. And I finally gave up trying to wrap my head around it. We should... We should get some sleep. 
Brigo said as the fire continued to crackle and as Truckjan snored gently on my shoulder. He gathered a bunch of leaves and spread them out for me, and Truckjan forming a makeshift mattress beneath one of the trees. Wait, you want me to sleep right, right, right next to her? I exclaimed, she's practically naked. Brigo rolled his eyes. Yes, it would be awfully hard for you sleeping next to a beautiful naked woman with some of the greatest assets in all of Twig Twigoslavia. I weep for you, my friend. Now go to sleep. At dawn, we, we begin the drive towards the border. Rigo then proceeded to put on his entire golden armor yet again before sitting down with his back against the tree and drifting off to sleep. Truckchan was also fast asleep, so I lowered her gently into the mattress made of leaves, and then I laid down next to her. It was a hard night in more ways than one. <laughs> <laughs> Very well done, Animax. So I have that to say, Animax deserves mad, mad respect for this. No, no, you guys did That's amazing. Hard. You guys did amazing. Thru um, Iron Mouse's Truck Chan, Nox as narrator and Birito, and Briggs as Briggs. Both of you were, <laughs> all three of you were just awesome. You brought my dreams to life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, this All is right. the second chapter. The prologue in the first chapter are available on uh, on Patreon for you to read, and we do have the voice recordings on there as well. Ideally, in the future, we we'd want to get them like more professionally done, um, like audio wise and stuff. Well, I, I'd still keep uh, mouse. <laughs> yeah, but like she wouldn't be on the spot live. You know, she'd have her own time to record it. Mm -hmm, yeah, if you yeah. wanted to. <laughs> of course, of course, I do. Thank you. Oh, yeah, this was so much fun, guys. Yeah, and, like, amazing. I had such a blast writing it, and you guys did an awesome job. <laughs> oh, I laughed so hard. Oh, so hard. That was awesome. Man, okay. my throat is done. <laughs> <laughs> too, yeah, too much, thank uh... you. Thanks, everyone, for the kind words in the chat. I was following the Yeah, I was also I was watching the chat between every line, and then I realized that I had another line. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah awesome stuff yeah so we're gonna definitely make this available like the text um either on wattpad or like web novel or somewhere eventually we're just figuring out where is the best place to put it and until then you can read it on patreon we're gonna have it up on patreon so people who pledge to the patreon will get early access to the chapters and then we're gonna later post them to wherever we decide to post them publicly yeah and then, then we'll publish them and uh, we'll make it an anime hell yeah Oh yeah, well that was no promises though. <laughs> yeah, like you guys don't even know. You guys don't even know. We're still we still have to reach Anamakistan and Noxteria. And oh, I have, have there's so much. Plan. Yeah, we have a lot planned. So like like it was this is more just introductory. First chapter we get Isekai, second chapter you meet Brego, third chapter no, or dude, I mean we're, we're in the second chapter over here, we, we met the full naked princess. Princess, my bad. It was yeah. prologue Isekai, first chapter even you meet more Brigo. Than that, we, we mentioned the power system, kink users. Right? Yeah, so kinks have been mentioned, but you guys haven't even seen what kinks are, so... Not yet, not yet. Oh. And we also talked a little bit about the world building. Bro, this is the, the new One Piece, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the thirsty One Piece, everybody. Yay! Anyway, we have a bunch of people in the chat saying, Mouse and Briggs! <laughs> <laughs>